Great. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Eisenberg. I am the co-founder and CEO of a new startup uh, here in New York City called Floored. Um, what we're doing at Floored is we are automatically generating 3D models of physical real estate using a brand new type of camera technology. So to lay the framework for sort of how Floored came about, uh, in 2010, Microsoft came out in conjunction with an Israeli company called PrimeSense with a pretty incredible device. Many of you may have these Kinects in your home. Um, what's very unique about the Microsoft Kinect is that for the first time, it put a 3D sensor in the hands of uh, consumers and businesses and developers um, that actually was capable of mapping the world in front of you. It's the reason why you can play a video game. Uh, you and I could be playing ping pong just with our hands. Um, what was really unusual about this, uh, the e evolution of this process, however, was that in 2011, Microsoft did something that they very rarely do, which is that they open sourced a lot of the code around the Kinect. And what that did is was revolutionary. It put this very affordable 3D sensor in the hands of developers around the world. Um, put a 3D sensor that cost two or three hundred dollars in the hands of software developers when the nearest equivalent they would have had access to is something that would have cost more than ten times that amount. Uh, today, in in the rest of the ecosystem, uh, other types of 3D sensors start at twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars and go all the way up to the hundred thousand dollar 3D scanners that are on the top of the Google self-driving cars that you'll see in the next decade or so. Um, and so, in 2012, uh, some of the smartest <laughs> Connect hackers that, uh, that existed were based out in Palo Alto actually said we're going to um, we're going to centralize the uh, 3d sensing data that's coming in into a point-and-click uh, solution that's not yet public on the market but they built the first version of this camera uh, I was living in San Francisco at the time working for an enterprise software company and I said uh, this is actually going to change the world this is going to be a device that uh, whether it's this device or whether it's a device that's similar to it uh, will one day be embedded inside of our tablets and in our mobile devices which is going to allow us to capture the physical world around it. And we said, okay, that's a pretty neat and interesting premise from which to begin. Uh, the challenge, however, is that there's a bunch of software that I just glossed over that's going to have to exist to make that work. And so we started Floored after we saw the Matterport camera emerge um, to actually refine the messy-ish 3D data that comes out of these sensors to create data that's very beautiful. And we sell that data uh, to some of the largest real estate developers in the world. I like that animation. <laughs> um, so earlier this year, in January, uh, we released uh, the first version of our product, which is uh, a first-of-its-kind 3D exploration tool of real physical spaces uh, that both streams through the web and streams across mobile. Um, I do have to make one note, which is that, uh, unfortunately, we are under a contract uh, that expires at the end of April that, uh, that prohibits us from receiving press coverage for the moment. It's part of uh, an exclusivity deal. So uh, all I'd ask is that if there are any journalists in the argument, not that I'd be so presumptuous to assume that you'd write about us, uh, if you could just speak to me afterwards. Uh, tweets are fine, but actual articles uh, for the next two weeks are, are uh, no-go. So um, just in case for some of the stuff that I'll show in a moment. Um, we, as we were thinking about what uh, industry with which to take uh, this incredible new 3D capture technology, we actually talked to a bunch of different folks. Uh, put my old Bain consultant hat on, and we talked to folks in the, uh, as far as industries from construction uh, to things like crime scene uh, reconfiguration to, uh, to things like real estate, also to things like uh, retail and product design, which is actually in my background. Uh, and ultimately, when we stumbled across commercial real estate, we ended up seeing pages that looked a lot like this. This is a, a business called uh, Showcase.com. It's actually operated by the largest commercial real estate data company in the world called CoStar. Um, uh, the challenge with what we found when people were searching for commercial real estate is that there's been no shortage of companies who have actually gone after these real estate listing problems. The challenge is that the data is, first of all, hard to find. Um, here's what you're looking for in terms of the, uh, if you're trying to get an actual image of what this space looks like. Um, the second problem is that real estate is unfortunately notoriously notorious for the problem that what you see in terms of the marketing communications that come from real estate firms is often what you not what you get. Um, what you see is, in fact, markedly different from what you get. And so we started looking and seeing what was the default currency of how, three, of how real estate is communicated today? And we started seeing stuff like inaccurate floor plans. First of all, we just started seeing floor plans everywhere. And we started thinking, um, if we've got this really neat way to visualize space compared to this very flat, completely monochromatic uh, 2D piece of information, maybe there's something to start here. We started digging in. We saw a small number of people were using photography to, demo, you know, to, uh, to capture space. Fortunately, that photography is often distorted. I'm sure you guys have all seen the unfortunate experience of seeing a fisheye lens uh, real estate 
say photography. Um, and so we started seeing, uh, were there any folks out there who are doing things that are cooler? Video, video is a big step forward. Uh, you get multiple perspectives. <coughs> Unfortunately, the content itself is very dynamic. You obviously can't turn around in a video. Um, and then we started seeing stuff like uh, Google Street View emerge. Um, again, where you're sort of, you can now you can turn around, but you're stuck. You're stuck in terms of your position in the space, uh, unless they've mapped you know, the interior. Then you're really stuck with the content of what's inside of that space. And so we saw an opportunity to bring 2020 technology, literally technology that will be much more prevalent in the next decade, to an industry that primarily markets from floor plans today. We thought that we could bring uh, technology that was at least 10x to how the industry was marketing today. Um, and so we said, what type of business should we, should we build? Um, we looked at uh, tons of startups in this space, and everyone was building a listings business. And we said, let's actually not do that. Let's attack this problem at the much more atomic level. Let's change the nature of the, uh, of the uh, content that's in real estate. And so what we've decided to build is hopefully the single best way uh, to view real estate, ultimately the perfectly transparent way um, to view space uh, in, uh, in any format of any kind. And, uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Um, so what you'll see here is a 3D walkthrough. We'll show you the live demo in a moment. Um, that's working both in my browser and across mobile. Uh, and this is a space that doesn't uh, exist in this form in real life. We've been able to capture the dimensions uh, of the space that does exist and start to make modifications to it. Now how does that process work? So we've got a four step process to go from capture with a brand new device to actually uh, you or a business owner or a broker or a landlord actually exploring that process. Uh, exploring the, the space. Uh, the first thing we had to do is actually have to modify the hardware. Um, what we found is that the camera that's baked inside of the uh, the Kinect is just too resolution to provide a, uh, a cutting edge solution uh, to the market. So what you see here is a digital SLR that's mounted on top of the camera uh, that actually takes really, really high quality um, photo textures that we then map onto the space. The second, and this is where the bulk of our software takes place, is that we actually refine this relatively unstructured uh, geometric data couple it with the photographic textures that we get from our camera, and we build really beautiful 3D spaces. And then there's the challenge of actually rendering those 3D spaces uh, into, a, uh, into a format that looks beautiful, uh, that looks in many cases you know, hand-built, uh, and then having that work across devices. And then finally, we've built an experience that allows you to explore. So I'll jump right in. Um, what happens when we bring our camera into the space is that we place it around the room. Um, where's the down at the bottom? So we bring the camera in, we place it from room to room. As the camera head spins, it's controlled by an <coughs> iPad. It gathers data, uh, and then we move it from room to room, and then the software automatically stitches together the model, and this is what we get. Um, what you're gonna be looking at uh, is the first view that you get is the actual floor plan. This is the top layer of a four floor townhouse that's up in Harlem. And what we built is an experience to have you fully be able to navigate that space uh, in 3D, and then to actually be able to walk inside of it and start to uh, and start to move through the space. So this is uh, this is the third floor of a townhouse that is being gutted. Uh, this developer is actually doing something very neat. He's doing a time lapse of the building over the course of the next <coughs> six months. So you can see as these changes are being made. And so this uh, this is a super cool product that unfortunately not that many people want to buy. Uh, and the reason why <laughs> the reason why they don't want to buy it is because. Uh, they are, um, they're substituting either doing nothing for it or they're substituting taking a photo and it's just not perfect yet. Uh, the, uh, what you'll see is that as we move through the space there are going to be some challenges with uh, scanning reflective surfaces, there are going to be some challenges with uh, scanning, um, uh, getting windows to come out perfectly clear. And so we've had to build an entire software pipeline that allows us to do stuff like this which is to take, uh, this is a retail space on Canal Street. Unfortunately, as you walk through this space, uh, as you walk through the streets uh, uh, in real life, you can't actually see inside of the space. The windows are boarded up on both sides. And so the only way for you to actually see the space, you can't find this space on the web, is to actually go and get a broker to open and show you this door. And we think that that is an unacceptable uh, solution for how people should discover physical spaces in this, uh, in this time and age. And so what we do for this particular client, this is a very large REIT, uh, they've asked us to take this space, which right now doesn't do much for people who have trouble with vision, uh, of imagining is this going to be the next Dunkin' Donuts, is this going to be my, my cool Soho loft, it's, or my cool uh, Soho boutique. And uh, in this case they wanted to pitch this particular space to a bunch of sleek uh, coffee shop uh, chain owners who are thinking about moving into this particular area of town. And within 24 hours, the software refinement process that we've been able to build, we can take all the geometric data that exists from this raw scan and actually deliver them exactly what they were looking for. So this is uh, that same exact space with the same exact dimensions, however we've modified it so that it looks like something they'd be happy to present. This is, this is the space that I showed in the example before. This is digital information that's been captured from the physical world and placed inside of the scene. 
We're also able to do stuff like uh, take um, digital information. In this case, we're going to do a tech office. This is on uh, 54th Street. Um, and we're actually able to layer on top the real world physical views. So as we go to the window, um, we're going to be able to look outside and see this is exactly what it looks like from this particular point in space. And then we can do stuff like you could never imagine doing in a photo or a video, which is to actually pop you outside of the space, look around, <laughs> and understand what the views are going to be like. <laughs> the truth is that this is just the beginning. Once you've created a digital file of a physical space, the possibilities are endless in terms of how you can modify that space. You think about how the future of how we're going to buy stuff. You think about the future of how we're going to visualize places. Um, all of this is going to change as a result of new capture technologies that are going to replace the simple, the simple photo that you've got in your iPhone. So how do we actually make money? Well, we take spaces that look like this, uh, we scan them, uh, and then we offer you a number of solutions around it. So customers, in particular large real estate property owners, developers, brokers, will pay us to convert the scanned data that we get from the actual camera into clean data. And doing this process as automatically as possible is what allows us to reduce the price for them paying someone to build this by hand by an order of magnitude. And that's how we're sweeping through the industry, is by selling a product that the only way that you could get something similar is to pay someone to do it by hand. So we can clean the spaces digitally, and then we can also start to design them. So this is all the same space within a matter of days. We've been able to transform the physical space that they're trying to uh, teach someone uh, what that space is going to look like. So in one fell swoop, sorry, um, in one fell swoop, we're able to run a software process that actually um, eliminates the need to do all of these different physical <laughs> offline processes that real estate firms pay collectively $30 billion a year. For the commercial real estate industry, that's how much marketing services dollars are spent. Across generating floor plans, we, we capture that automatically. Taking photos, shooting video, generating 3D renderings, both static and video, taking digital panoramas uh, of the outside space, and then providing interactive experiences. Um, we're working with about 30 large developers, mostly around here in New York City. We're also working in D.C. and L.A. Um, and we've been fortunate that a number of them have offered to uh, lend us their names, which I haven't included here for part of the press embargo. But, um, but we're very hopeful that we can revolutionize the way that people buy and sell uh, and market real estate with an interactive platform that trumps whatever has existed before. Uh, finally, where I'll end off is that uh, this is a really challenging problem to execute on because we've got to build uh, human competencies across a hugely uh, uh, sort of varying set of problems. On the capture side, we've got hardware modifications, we've got folks who need to understand how photography works and lighting works. Uh, we do things like take multiple range of images uh, to capture dark and light rooms and be able to do that digitally. We process the data uh, through folks who study computer vision, this is the field of robotics, machine learning to train our algorithms how to do this better. Um, we render, this is a completely video game based uh, platform, so uh, any folks out there who've got kids who are hacking away on building video games, I want to know those folks. Um, and uh, image processing as well. And then the exploration is a typical uh, user experience challenge. We're doing it across web, mobile, ultimately we'll do it off of augmented reality and, uh, and sort of you know, Google Glassian type uh, applications as well. And those are challenges where, for which we need folks who are terrific on the front end. Uh, this is our team here. Uh, if you go to our team page, uh, we built uh, floridcom slash about. Uh, this is where you can see this happening live. Somehow the women got out of actually doing this. I don't know um, how this happens. Uh, you click on our faces, you'll get something fun. Um, and uh, I'll next out of that. Uh, we are venture backed. Um, I didn't want to do it, but we needed some money to move a little bit faster. So we raised a million bucks uh, in December from a terrific set of folks. And I think that's all. Awesome. Or my computer froze. But uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Any questions from the crowd? How do you think about sharing the data that you have, uh, if, if at all, with other companies that might want to build on top of you? Or are you thinking about just integrating throughout the whole set of different applications that you might build on top of it? Yeah, I mean, so of a company of 11 folks, uh, there are 10 software developers. So I, there's no way we're not building an API for this to, uh, to help people build on top of it. Um, we're very interested in all, all the different con concepts of what could exist on top of this data. The truth is that right now, if you pay us to generate this data, um, you can choose whether or not other folks have access to it. So for the moment, we're very focused on getting the company profitable via just selling, selling the data to the people who are buying for it. Um, I think uh, a lot of those people are going to want to expose, you know, they want their CRM system to talk to uh, the 3D data and to figure out where people are moving. A uh, big tech firm in the city wanted to build, uh, they apparently they have trouble, people uh, lose understanding of where their conference rooms are. They have a huge floor. They want to build a visualization layer on top of this. Uh, we're not going to build a bunch of that stuff, so I think uh, I totally envision people building on top. For now, um, we're being instructed by our customers, I'd say.
accurate are the measurements of what you do? In other words, the, the logical step here is you visualize something, you turn it into AutoCAD, it turns it into a set of construction documents, but do you have to kind of go and actually measure in order to turn it into construction level, or is the measurement precise enough? Yeah, so um, the data is accurate to about one inch, which means you would not build off of you it. Build um, off. However, our software, the reason why we built the software layer on top of the hardware is that um, we do plan on integrating with those very expensive devices that allow you to get the precision that the you precision. need to measure that automatically. Those are, uh, I'm waiting for those to come down in price a little bit. It's also a, uh, it's a process that is a little bit harder to perfectly automate, and so um, you'll, you'll see us move towards there over time, but this, this is squarely a software company. But you could also have a, an adjustment phase where you could go in and layer in the correct dimensions and then all your stuff would be. Um, you yeah. could layer on top uh, yeah. blueprint data on top of this. We haven't built any of that. I would say the tricky part is actually knowing what you're clicking on when you're working in 3D. Uh, that's the, uh, the hardest thing to do is actually click on two points. Uh, and so we've got to build a layer of software that makes this really easy for people to do. We look to like Google SketchUp as an inspiration for how someone built a process that <coughs> takes a very difficult process like 3D modeling and bring it to a large number of people. <laughs> I get how spinning around a 3D camera in an empty room works, but does it work as well if there's stuff in the room? So furniture is very difficult to capture perfectly accurately because you've got to get every single angle from every perspective. Uh, so we didn't start with furniture. Um, I think uh, you'll see that it works okay. Uh, I would say we can get software most of the way there. Um, some of it you're going to have to do things like recognize when a piece of software has been scanned and then quickly sub out the actual digital piece of furniture for that. I think that's where a lot of the machine learning that uh, we're working on will come into play. I mean, probably you have considered that, like, how you think about other industries, like, for example, like art galleries, museums, and which kind of business. Yeah, we're open for business, so uh, whatever you got. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we take requests from every, I mean, if you're willing to pay me, we're willing to scan it. There's no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's an enterprise meetup, right? Okay. <laughs> yep. How long does it take to scan, like, that four-story uh, that took about an hour, hour 15 or so, so it's entirely a function of the square footage. Uh, it's a little bit of a function of the surface area, so furniture fit a very densely packed area, if, if you wanted to capture it perfectly, um, would require more scanning time. Uh, big open space, I use a, you know, a sort of back of the envelope of 10,000 square feet an hour. Um, I'd say a space that's uh, got more uh, surface area is going to be a little bit slower than that. A really dense area could be as slow as like uh, 100 square feet a minute. And then the rendering, how long is that? Um, Different stages take different speeds of time, so if you're looking for the most photorealistic thing possible, it has to go through a rendering engine that we can't run automatically. We also can control how much computing power gets thrown at it, so uh, it's, again, a function of what, are, what do our customers exactly want. I'd say we shoot for deliverables within the week. So we scan, you get a finished product within five days. How much do you charge for that assembly? <laughs> okay, so you hit me on the one I didn't put on the slide. Um, the truth is, is that uh, we're still figuring out the perfect pricing mechanism. I'd say a lot of it is tied up with what you want as well. You want a raw scan that has had no uh, manual processes on top of it. That could be as low as 20, even 10 cents a square foot. Ultimately, I think that will be completely free. I think you'll be able to get scans done because the hardware will be commoditized. So uh, our services run from 10 cents a square foot to two bucks, 50 cents a square foot. Cool. Thank uh, you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah.